Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're going to talk about the Fighting Revolver. And the Fighting Revolver was always sort of a niche gun. Um, back in the era where police officers typically carried revolvers, most people carried stock revolvers or replaced the grips with improved grips and called it good. But there were those with a greater need, or who simply fancied themselves pistoleros, who tricked out their revolvers to make them a better fighting tool. And while I do still know police officers who carry revolvers, they are very much in the minority and viewed as eccentric. Now, back in the dim mists of prehistory, when I was a small town cop, my preference was to carry a double stack 9mm semi-auto, and I was the odd man out. And eventually a conjunction of things combined to mandate that I must carry a revolver. And I carried a Model 28 with a 4-inch barrel, Highway Patrolman, maybe the most cop revolver ever made. And um, alternately, I later carried a K-Frame 38. And with the ammunition choices at the time, that was suboptimal, but I was confident in my ability with it. Now, in the fullness of time, and the fullness of crime, um, it became more and more obvious that capacity was important. This was, this was gang time. This was when the Bloods and the Crips and their ilk were doing drive-by shootings, and there was a veritable pandemic of violence on the streets, and having more shots made sense. And ammunition was improving. Um, hollow points of the 1980s were a dubious proposition at best, but it was better than throwing rocks, and having 16 of them, that's a lot of rocks. So, the fighting revolver as a duty weapon is obsolete. Does it still have a place in civilian self-defense? It'll do the job. Um, I consider it quite adequate for my needs under most circumstances. But it's not the best choice for most people. Anyway, those who fancied themselves pistoleros often modified their revolvers to do what they needed to do, which was put shots on target quickly. And that was the fighting revolver as a custom proposition. Well, we're going to go to the tabletop and I'll show you some of the modifications I have made to this one to make it fit that category. First things first, unload and show clear. And we are clear. Back in the day, you carried a revolver and a couple of speed loaders, usually HKS or Safari Land if you were into Exotica. As you can see from the painted rims, these are dummy cartridges. So, typical revolver used on duty, it's a double action revolver, meaning that pulling the trigger cocked and released the hammer. Or, typically, there was a thumb spur so a hammer could be manually cocked for single action fire for precision, even though in the course of duty, you might never use that. So every custom gun starts with an idea or a concept. And in this case, my concept was, it's about 1970, and I need a gun for on and off duty. So it has to serve multiple roles, has to be capable of being a duty weapon or being used for concealed carry. Let me knock some stuff over here in the background. And that meant six inch barrels are right out. Four inch barrel was acceptable, but since I got to choose, I chose a three inch barrel. It's just a little more convenient and a little faster on the draw. So, the first thing your fighting revolver needs is a, to be reliable, of course, but that's a given. 
we'll just assume you're using a good, good quality weapon that's reliable. Um, the second thing it needs is a good trigger. You need to be able to use the trigger without moving the gun. And that means it has to be smooth and it's good if it's also light. So trigger job. This had a very fine trigger to begin with and I monkeyed with a little bit here and there. One common thing that people do to improve the trigger pull on their double action revolvers is to change the springs. I did not because of number one, reliability. I want primers to go off when I hit them, which means I want everything doing its job as thoroughly as possible. Now, something else, of course, is since the barrel's been shortened, it needs a new sight, and I installed, manufactured and installed a nice narrow blade so that I could have a very clear sight picture. I also enlarged and squared off the notch of the rear sight for better sight acquisition. I bobbed the hammer because, because you really don't use single action in defensive shooting. And if I'm in a situation where I have the leisure to cock it, I can always start it with the trigger, release the trigger, and bring it to a full cock. But that's pretty unlikely. Um, the next thing is grips. You want a grip that holds the revolver firmly in your hand. And with my size hands, factory grips are suboptimal for me. I went through a number of iterations of grips for this revolver and recently settled on these, which are custom grips that I made in Kong Hollow Alves and then stipled the heck out of to provide a very secure grip. And this here is perfect for my thumb. Everything gets locked in tight and it doesn't slip in my hand when fired. But it's not so rough as to be uncomfortable when firing full powered loads. Now, back in the day, the new hotness was the Pac-Mare neoprene grip. And I certainly had them on my revolvers, but they have a disadvantage. They're great for duty or for, you know, similar open carry, but they tend to be kind of sticky. If you're wearing a light cover garment, they have a tendency to catch and cause the gun to print. So for that reason, I've always preferred a wooden grip. Now, other modifications. The um, front of the cylinder has been slightly rounded here and there to make it easier to reholster without paying too much attention. And so, bobbed hammer, improved trigger, smooth trigger. This was originally a serrated trigger, which is excellent for double action shooting, not so good. Excellent, excuse me, for single action shooting, not so good for double action. And I did not use a wider trigger shoe or anything silly like that because I find that the narrow trigger with this particular gun works very well for me indeed. Now, what a fighting revolver has to do is fight, which means you need to be able to deliver shots precisely and quickly to the target, to the spot specifically where they will do the most good. And so the grip, the improved sights, the improved trigger all serves that function but you're not always shooting. So your finger needs to be somewhere safe off the trigger. This is probably a more modern thing because back in the day, I very often saw police with their finger in the trigger guard. And yes, it makes us cringe now, but it was the norm then. So I need to be able to get from here to here as quickly as possible. To serve that, I have relieved the side of the trigger guard. Now, at, in the pre-war era, some people would entirely cut away the front of the trigger guard, notably the famous Fitz conversions done by... Uh, but I was never comfortable with that. But relieving part of the trigger guard, at least on the right side, 
serves much the same function, allowing quick access to the trigger for my fairly large fingers, but it doesn't compromise the safety. I also, since by 1970 we're shooting with two hands, I cut serrations 20 line per inch across the base of the trigger guard, and those are for my off hand, because when I grip the revolver, it locks it into position. Because to shoot rapidly and accurately, which is the entire reason for the gun's modifications, you don't want it shifting in your hand at all. You want it as locked in as possible. And this helps accomplish that. And some people radius these slightly. Uh, or chamfer them. Now, I've broken the edges on the cylinders, but I have not actually gone in and chamfered them. And this is to facilitate speed loading. But frankly, with the loads I use, they don't tend to catch. So I just broke the edge and called it good. And of course, full length extractor, which is nice. So there it is my 1970-ish custom fighting revolver. And um, I can shoot it very quickly, very accurately. So mission accomplished. Uh, do I carry it? Typically these days, not much, but I did for a while. And, um, and it does serve well in that role for me as a modern civilian. Now, one thing about revolvers is that semi-autos are quite angular. And the more organic curvature, for lack of a better term, of the revolver seems to print less conspicuously. It doesn't necessarily print less, but it doesn't scream gun to modern eyes when it does. And that can be an advantage. But again, it has the virtues of a revolver, extreme reliability, and the primary flaws, low capacity, and relatively slow reloads compared to a semi-auto. Still, as a civilian weapon, it has a place, and it has a use, and I never felt underarmed when I was carrying this. Make of that what you will. While the revolver's day has passed as a duty weapon, a lot of us still enjoy them. And much like cowboy action shooting, um, there are zoot shoots for uh, noir aficionados using primarily revolvers or period small caliber semi-autos. And it's, I'm sure, a great deal of fun. Anyway, that covers it in it maybe more detail than we really should, but there it is. I love this gun. I shoot it regularly. I shoot it well. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And it still, for my life and my needs, serves a practical value. So eh, that ticks enough boxes for me. Anyway, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.